next on the Gospel Bill Show. Gospel Bill, somebody stole my merchandise. Really? You bet. Listen, we got fresh fruit, canned goods, and all kinds of things for a man of your importance. You think so? What? What is going on? What? Them two fellas outside, they got boo coo of green beans. What happened to yours? I know they've got green beans, and they've got soap, and they've got flour, and they've got everything else I ordered four weeks ago. Those crates were the last piece of evidence that could connect us to hijacking those freight shipments. That's what happened. Adventures in Dry Gulch, featuring the Sheriff Gospel Bill, his sidekick Nicodemus, the general store owner Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, banker and mayor T.U. Tudwater, and the entire Dry Gulch gang. Miss Lena. Good morning, Nicodemus. I need to pick up my monthly case of green beans. Green beans. Let's see here. Hmm. Well, Nicodemus, the only thing I have is corn, but I have plenty of it. Oh, corn won't do. It's got to be green beans. Well, Nicodemus, I placed an order a month ago, and it just hadn't come in. Well, Miss Lena, I don't see how you could have run out. I mean, I pick up a case every month. I'm down to my last can. It'll be here any time, Nicodemus. Any time. Well, I, I guess I'll have to wait. Seems you're the only store in town. <laughs> hey, seeing as Miss Lana hasn't got any of this to sell, mm -hmm. we ought to be able to get a pretty prime price out of it. Uh, what do you mean, boss? Well, take your soap, for instance. Mm -hmm. How long can a feller go without a good, hot soap bath? Uh, been about a month for you. Hey, you. Now, listen, listen. What we need to do, we need to get this stuff out there, mm -hmm. set us up a stand, and have a good, old-fashioned sidewalk sale. Uh, like when I was a kid? What's that got to do with it? Well, when I was a little boy, I used to set up a stand up by the street, and I'd sell lemonade. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh. Hey, hey, boss, boss. What, what? Can I bring the sugar? Boy, when you was born, did they put anything up there? Uh, what do you mean? Never mind. Just help me get this stuff out there. Okay. Please send reply. Oh, oh, dog food! Oh, Barker, man, did you eat too much? No, I'm hungry. I want to buy some dog food. I don't have any. What? I thought this was a general store. Well, it is, Barker, man, but I've got an order coming for dog food. I just sent a telegram, and I'm sure I'll get a reply soon. Just be patient. Well, uh, uh, well, uh. The Gospel Bill Show continues after this. Yeah, I think you're going to like this one. Fits you real good, too. Thank you a bunch now. Well, here comes a man that knows a bargain when he sees one. Really? You bet. Listen, we got fresh fruit and canned goods and all kinds of things for a man of your importance. You think so? I do. And look here. You need this today. Some soap. How much is he? How much you got? Uh, I got the dollar. That'll do it. So, one dollar. That stuff will work wonders for you. I really appreciate this. Yeah. Hey, boss. Who was that? Somebody reminded me a whole lot of you. Really? Yeah. Boy, there's a bunch of crazies around here. I'm okay. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. What's that? Huh? Oh, it's a sidewalk sale. A sidewalk sale? Yeah. Check out our low, low, 
everyday prices. Well, I believe I will. Why, here comes a lady that knows a bargain when she sees one. What is this? Oh, man, we got all kinds of things. We got fresh fruit, we got canned goods. We got everything for a woman of your importance. These look like the same items that I ordered for my store. Well, ma'am, we only carry the finest merchandise. <sighs> the finest merchandise? You stay right here. Right here. Come in. Gospel Bill, somebody stole my merchandise. Well, now, Lana, sit down here and tell me what you mean. I've been expecting a shipment from St. Louis for a month, and it hasn't got here yet. Well, now, did you check on your order? I sure did. And here's the reply. Well, they sent the stuff all right. The wagon just didn't get here. I know where it is, Gospel Bill. There's two men out in the street selling my merchandise at ridiculous prices. And I know it's my stuff because it's all the things that I ordered. Well, now, Lana, if they stole your stuff, it shouldn't be too hard to prove. Let's go out there and have a talk with those guys. Now, just exactly what were you expecting in that order? Well, I had apples, oranges, I had canned fruit, vegetables, cornstarch, flour. Howdy, fellas. Looks like you're doing a pretty brisk business here. Howdy, Sheriff. What can we do you for? Well, I got a friend over here. Runs a general store, Miss Lana. She's been expecting a shipment of goods and didn't come in. Everything she's looking for is exactly what you've got out here. Now, listen, Sheriff. I got a bill of sale for every bit of this stuff. You want to see it? Yeah, I'd like to take a look at it. Here it is. Now, listen, Sheriff. We picked all this stuff up in St. Louis. We finish here, we're going on down to Dripping Springs and hold a sale. Are you sure you picked up every bit of this in St. Louis? Scout's honor, Sheriff. Boy, you're not a scout. Hush. Now listen, I can't argue with your bill of sale here, but I'm telling you something. I think there's something fishy about this whole thing. As soon as you get done here, you better move on down to Dripping Springs. Boy, are we in trouble? Well, Miss Lynn, I'm ready to pick up that case of green beans. Well, I'm sorry, but I just don't have them. What? What is going on? What? Them two fellers outside, they got boo of green beans. What happened to yours? I know they've got green beans, and they've got soap, and they've got flour, and they've got everything else I ordered four weeks ago. Miss Lynn, i got to have my GBs. My final can has been consumed. Nicodemus, what's this big deal about green beans? Well... Uh, it's a family matter. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have my green beans in my store very soon. Well, if it weren't for the case that we're such good friends, and I've been buying them from you for years, I'd be tempted to buy them from them other fellers, but seeing as you say they're coming in, I'll, I'll wait. Lana, excuse me. I'm sorry, but those fellas have a receipt for everything they've got out there on that sidewalk. Because the wholesale company always sends a receipt in with a shipment. Well, then they must have taken your receipt and forged it, but I can't prove that. They did a good job. Listen, you know who's really stealing from you? The devil. And as a Christian, you're going to have to take authority over him. In the meantime, Nicodemus and I will look around and see if we can find out if those guys made any kind of a mistake. Come on, Nicodemus. Hey, Gospel Bill, uh, now you said something about it's the devil that's stealing from Miss Lana. I thought it was them fellas over there. Look at this. The devil is using guys like that. Now listen, if they stole, it's a sin. And the devil is the father of all sin. In fact, the Bible says that he comes to steal and kill and destroy. That's in John 10.10, 10. so the devil uses people. Well, wait a minute. And if it's the devil doing it like you say, how are we going to arrest him? Well, I'll tell you, you can't use a gun. You can't use a badge. But you can use the Word of God in the name of Jesus. Come on. Look out, devil. Here we come. Empty shelves. I've had it. Oh, Father, you said in your Word that I have authority over the devil. 
and that whatsoever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now, devil, in the name of Jesus, you give me back my merchandise now, in Jesus' name. Why are we you, Gospel Bible? What are we going to do? Well, I've been thinking about it. Now, there's no way that they've got all the merchandise off that stolen wagon sitting out there on that sidewalk. Yeah, you're right. So that means they've got a hideout somewhere with the rest of the stuff stashed away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if we can find that hideout, we can find some evidence. Yeah. It won't do any good to get the bill of sale. They forged that, and they did a good job on it. No. We've got to find some of the crates. Yeah. What's the crates got to do with it? Well, listen. That wholesale company that ships Miss Lana her supplies? Yeah. Every time they send her anything, they always crate it up in a specially marked package. Look, here's one right here. It always has the name of her store. Oh, I got you. Now, if we can find some of these crates at their hideout, we can prove they stole that merchandise. You're right, you're right. I can't go follow them, Nicodemus. They're on to me, and they'd suspect something. Well, I got it. I'll follow them home after work, and we'll find them crates. All right. And as soon as you find out something, get back here. Got you, Gospel Bill. Hey, I took care of it, boss. Are you sure you burned every one of those crates? As sure as I can be. Those crates were the last piece of evidence that could connect us to hijacking those freight shipments. So that's what happened. Well, we might as well go to town and sell the rest of these goods and make us some easy money. <laughs> that's right, boss. Easy money. <laughs> They did it! GB, I heard them fellers with my own two ears. They're the ones that stole that freight shipment that was Miss Landon. Well, did you see the crates? Well, that's the problem. They was destroying all the crates that they had. Well, we gotta find some evidence on those fellas. They had to slip up somewhere. Nicodemus, we're not gonna let the devil steal from Miss Lana any longer. Come on, show me where that hideout is. Right. Well, I got it figured. One more day of selling these goods and we can clear out of Dry Gulch. Go away! We don't want any! Well, mister, I'm afraid you're gonna get it whether you want it or not. Listen, Sheriff, I already showed you the receipt for all these goods. Well, then you won't mind me looking at some of your crates. My deputy tells me that you fellas hijacked the wagon and got all Miss Lana's stuff here. We're gonna take a look at a crate or two. Keep an eye on them both, Nicodemus. Well, now, look right here. Dry Gulch County General Store, that's not your business, mister. Uh, it says the same thing right down here, GB. Well, that's the evidence we will need to take you boys to jail. That's what I suspected all along. Come on with me. I'll have your gun, please. I thought you burned all those crates. <laughs> Come on, move it. You know, Lana, I don't believe I've ever seen this store stocked with as much merchandise as you've got it now. And it looks good. Do you know that the wholesale company has stood good for every dollar that I lost? Well, that's not all. When we took those two fellas down to the territorial prison, we found out that there was a little reward coming due for them, and so we just decided to let you have it all. Oh, well, thank you. I not only get my shelves restocked, get reimbursed, but I also get a reward. And I get my green beans. Nicodemus, will you now tell us what the big deal is about the green beans? Oh, it's just a little family matter. Now, come on now. What in the world is the deal about the green beans? Well, you see, when I was just a little feller, just knee high to a grasshopper, my old granny used to say, Nicodemus, eat your green beans every day. When you grow up, you'll be real good looking. And I think it's a working just fine. Hey, hey, come here. I, I want to read you a story out of Second Chronicles chapter 20 about King Jehoshaphat and how he defeated his enemies. Wait, I got a better idea. Let's all close our eyes and go there right now. on the door, the royal palace 
of the king. It's not a little King Jehoshaphat who was uh, sitting on his throne so much. He just yelled out, uh, come on in. You see, Jehoshaphat was a very good king. He loved the Lord with all his hand. And because of this, all of Judah was blessed throughout the whole land. Well, that servant, he just came bursting into the palace. So excited he could barely talk. He said, kick, 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 king, we in big, big trouble. Oh, let me tell you what I just saw. I'm a sinner. Your God is in you. Fear not. Just praise the Lord. We'll fight your battle for you. Nothing that he won't do. But That fella said, uh, King, out in the Syrian plains, there are soldiers far as you can see. And they got spears and swords and horses and knives. They'll next to see by and get Well, there's more about the Nemanites and all kinds of ice. And King, this don't look like no social call, huh? We're out in numbers about a hundred to one. I'm afraid they're going to kill us all. Oh, King Jehoshaphat, come with me, get my money scared. Then he called all the people to pray. And God said, you won't even need to fight in this battle. Just that feeling to salvation today. That next morning, they got up real early. Oh, King Jehoshaphat had the strangest plan. He said, instead of putting the, the army out front like we usually do, we're going to put the band so the drums kick it off like this, man. Could I have a little bass guitar now? Yeah. Yeah, they started moving a little bit then. Uh, uh, could I have a little guitar? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they started walking down the road, and they were starting to feel a little better. And then the orchestra came in playing. I'm Gospel Bill, and this is Dry Gulch, USA. And I want to invite you to a week of camp this summer that you'll never forget. When you come to Dry Gulch, USA, you can stay in a log cabin that looks just like an Old West storefront. But there's a lot more to Dry Gulch, USA than just eating and sleeping. Our camp has more than a mile and a quarter shoreline on beautiful Lake Hudson. And it's just a perfect place for a canoe ride, 
You can go fishing and swimming. But maybe you're the kind who would prefer to ride horses or ride in the county jail wagon. You might enjoy visiting Chief Nuanasin for an exciting campfire story or hunt animal targets on the Chief's trail. Then there's time for a shooting contest and hiking trails. Hey, there's plenty to do at Dry Gulch USA, but the most important reason for coming is so you can grow strong in the Lord. For more information on Camp Dry Gulch USA, call 918-234-5656. Hey, I want to tell you how to make an arrest. Did you know you got a badge? Oh, not one like this. I'm not even talking about a badge you can see with your eyes. But I am talking about a spiritual badge that gives you power to arrest the guy who really steals and kills and destroys. I'm talking about the devil. You know, a lot of people don't believe that the devil really does exist. They think it's just some kind of a fairy tale. But I want to tell you, the Word of God says that he's real. And the Bible says that he steals and kills and destroys. He uses people to do that very often. You see, the devil uses people by putting thoughts in their minds. And when someone steals, kills, or destroys, takes away anything that's good from you or other people, that person is being used by the devil. Now, God uses people to bless us. He uses people sometimes to answer the prayers that we pray. Well, if God can use people to do good things, the devil very often uses people to do bad things. And so when people start doing bad things to you, when they steal from you, when they start hurting you, you have to go after the devil, not just those people. You say, devil, in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop working against me. You know why? Because the devil is the one who is invisibly working behind the scenes. And if you don't stop him, it won't do any good to put away all the people. It's the devil you've got to stop. He is always the one who's behind the trouble. Now, the badge of authority that you have is the name of Jesus. When you speak in Jesus' name, the devil has to listen. He has to obey. You've arrested him when you use that name. So, don't let him steal from you anymore. Get with it, man. Arrest him. Cartoon Adventures Through the Pages of the Superbook, coming up next. And at 9.30 Eastern, news by, for, and about kids on Kids World, here on the Family Channel. the Gospel Bill Show. The sheriff doesn't come around. <laughs> well, then we'll have a real easy time of it. But if the sheriff does show up, it's going to be a whole mess of shooting. And somebody's going to get hurt. And it's not going to be us. in Dry Gulch, featuring the Sheriff Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, the general store owner, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, banker and mayor, T.U. Tudwater, and the entire Dry Gulch gang. Yo, Miss Lana! Well, hi, Nicodemus! Miss Lana, picture this. Sun going down in the desert plains. All these yellows and oranges and greens. Been feeling a mite creative lately, Miss Lana. Was wondering if you could order me up some grease paint. <laughs> well, what's so funny about my artistic type talent? Well, it's not that, Nicodemus, but do you remember that time you had that tube of grease paint and it wouldn't open? You squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it and the top popped off and that bright red paint squirted all over Gospel Bill's face. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't know if he was red because all that grease paint or because he was so all fired mad at me. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he likes you. Yeah. By the way, where is the sheriff? I was just over to the jail. He ain't nowhere to be found. He left early this morning. He went to Dripping Springs to help the sheriff keep an eye on a couple of just-released prisoners. Well, what's so important about these fellas? Well, they seem to be well known for making large withdrawals from some banks in the territory. Bank robbers, huh? 
Yeah. Sure I'm glad to be out of that place. You know, one more day in that prison would have drove me crazy. You know what we're gonna have to do for money, don't you? Yeah. Guess we're gonna have to rob us a bank. Yeah, the only problem is they got two sheriffs here in Dripping Springs. They got their own and they got that sheriff from Dry Gump's been hanging around here lately. It doesn't make any sense to me while he's hanging around here. Sheriff from Dry Gulch is hanging around here. Wonder who's watching there, Black. All right, now what colors would you like? Well, let's see. Give me one tube of red. One red. And uh, one tube of yellow. One yellow. And two tubes of orange. Two? Why two? Oh, sometimes when I get to using orange, I get all carried away. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, what's the matter? The problem is the sheriff. I was just over at the jail, and that man is nowhere to be found. Well, that's because he's not there. I know he's not there. The question is, where is he? Well, he's out of town taking care of some business. Out of town? Well, do these out-of-towners pay that man's salary? No, the citizenry of Dry Gulch pays his salary, including my tax dollars. And so when you've got a problem, what's a guy supposed to do? <clears throat> well, uh, you know, Tudwater, in the past, in the sheriff's absence, uh, I've taken over for him and filled in quite capably, I might add, anything that came up. Now, uh, what's your problem? Well, my problem is that Elmer Barnes is selling fresh fishing worms. Really? I've been in need me some now, fresh... Now, you don't understand Elmer Barnes selling those worms is not doing me one bit of good. So? So? Do you realize that the fine clientele of my bank is being exposed to these common man's worms being sold by that buffoon? Well, now, Mr. Tudwater, I don't think there's any kind of law that says Elmer can't sell fishing worms wherever he wants to. Well, sir, there is a law that says that one man can't hurt another man's business, and he is hurting my business. Now, what are you going to do? <sighs> Well, Tudwater, Elmer's a reasonable type guy. I'm sure if I'd go talk to him, he'd be glad to move down the street just a little bit. Well, if you think you can help, let's go. Come on. All right. Worm? I got worm for sale. Hey, you want to buy a worm? Ah! That scared my wormy. Hey, see, there he is. Right there in front of my bank, selling worms. Here are my customers. Now you get rid of him. Okay, uh, Melmer, I uh, don't think you could move down the street a little bit to sell your worms. Uh-uh. No, sir, I'm staying right here. Now, listen here. The law would demand that this man move. Now, you take care of it. Well, maybe just a, a little bit down the street. Uh-uh. i got a right. I'm staying right here. Then all I can do? I can't believe it. Now, if we had a decent sheriff in this town, I wouldn't have to put up with low-life riffraff like you. Oh, we're in the fishing thing, thing. Worms! I got worms! Well, the way I figure it, with the sheriff here in Dripping Springs, that bank job in Dry Gulch is going to be easier than stealing candy from a baby. What if the sheriff shows up? Well, one of two things can happen. If the sheriff doesn't come around, <laughs> well, then we'll have a real easy time of it. But if the sheriff does show up, it's going to be a whole mess of shooting. And somebody's going to get hurt. And it's not going to be us. Let's go. Worm! I got worms for sale! I don't see nothing like this ever happen again. Now, Worm! get out of the way. Get out of the way, Ellen. Now, don't you ever insult my clientele again. Huh? Now, I want to show you nothing like this will ever happen again. You know, if we had a decent sheriff, we wouldn't have to put up with these insults. This guy neglects his duties all the time. Now, I want to show you that your deposits are always safe in my bank, and there's nothing to worry about. Worms! I got worms for sale! Nicodemus. Oh, howdy, Gospel Bill. Hey, did you have a good trip down to Dripping Springs? Yeah, everything went great. Everything going good around here? Oh, yeah, it's going real good. 
Well, nearly everything's going good. Well, what's the problem? Well, seems Elmer decided to sell his fishing worms smack dab in front of Tutwater's bank, and old Tutwater is madder than a hornet about it. Wait a minute. Elmer is out in front of the bank. Yeah, right in the middle of it. Yeah, just selling, selling worms. Now, listen. Whatever you do, you got to get him away from that bank. Is there some kind of law that says he can't sell fishing worms in front of the bank? There's no city ordinance against selling worms, but I don't have time to explain it all to you now. You've got to get Elmer away from the front of that bank. I can't do it. Now i got to go. Whatever you do, get him away from that bank. Okay, but, but where are you going in such a hurry? Well, I just, i got to be gone for a while. If anybody needs me, you tell them I'll be back in a little bit. Well, yeah, but... Who's he going with that hat and coat, though? Word? I got worms for sale. <clears throat> uh, you know, Elmer, I was just doing some thinking. Now, I bet if you'd moved your worm business down in front of the general store, bet you'd do real good. Well, uh, I'm seeing right here. Oh, uh, Elmer, you know, they get a lot of traffic down to the livery stable. Why, cowboys coming in and out of there all the time. Uh, bet they'd love to go fishing. You ought to move over there. Uh, I don't see him right here where the money is. <clears throat> you know, Elmer, I've seen some of them fish you catch. Uh, most people would call that bait. Huh? Yeah, I got a little six-year-old nephew that can catch bigger fish out of his aquarium accidentally than you can out of the creek on purpose. Hey! Fact is... I can catch bigger fish than you. Can muck? Can too. Can muck? Can too. Muck? Too. Muck? Not too. Told you I could. Hey, you're trying to, uh, uh, challenge you? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go home and get my favorite worm. Ain't she even drinking? And I'll meet you at the fishing hole. All right, Elmer. You're on. Got rid of him. No thanks to that sheriff. Howdy, howdy. Yeah. Look at Miss Lana. What the what? Miss Lana, this ain't no laughing matter. Them two fellas that was just leaving your store? Yeah. I recognize them. Before they were sent up to prison, they're two former bank robbers. They are? Yeah, I don't know if I want to help with this sheriff and type stuff anymore. Well, uh, Nicodemus, uh, Nicodemus, Gospel Bill's going to be back soon. And, well, everything's going to be all right. Nicodemus, just the man I wanted to see. What for? Well, I just wanted to personally compliment you for getting that buffoon off the porch of my bank. Oh, well, you're welcome. Uh, Nicodemus? What? Is there something wrong? What makes you think that? Well, you're acting a little strange. You got a problem? Well, there's just two former bank robbers walked out of the store. Bank robbers? Yeah. Where's the sheriff? Oh, he'll be back later. Back later. Oh, and he calls himself a sheriff. He is no protector of the people. Preposterous. Hey, can you believe this town? Where is the sheriff when you need him? Do you realize that there are two former bank robbers right here in Dry Gulch? And where is the sheriff? They tell me he's going to be back later. Later? That guy is spineless. He's lazy. As far as I know, he might be out fishing. That man is worthless, spineless, and lazy. Poor man. Poor man. Bill. I mean, first he leaves town, then he comes back, picks up some clothes, then he leaves town again, then we got bank robbers everywhere. I mean, this town needs a sheriff that'll do his job. Now, Nicodemus, you're beginning to sound just like T.U. Tutwater. <gasps> I resent that, Miss Lena. After all, Gospel Bill is my best friend. Well, if he's your best friend, then you need to act like it and quit criticizing him. Tutwater's been doing plenty of it lately, and I know that he doesn't know all the facts. I want to tell you something, Nicodemus. When people begin to judge one another without knowing the whole story, 
They are asking for trouble. Hey! Oh, God, thank you, you thank you. Oh, hey, Elmer. I thought we were going fishing. Oh, Elmer, too much is going on. I, I can't go fishing with you right now. Well, okay. I guess I'll get back to selling worms at the bank. Uh, huh, at the bank? No, you can't do that, Elmer. Uh, well, I I'll have to go with him. Uh, okay, Elmer, come on. Let's see who can catch the biggest one. <laughs> okay. what I just said? There are two former bank robbers in this town. Now, if I were you, I would clear out of here. Uh-uh. Huh. Yeah, you've got more guts than that sheriff of ours. In fact, an old man like you'd probably make a better lawman anyway. The taxes I pay in this town for a sheriff's protection is where is between us and this bank job is that old man. He's sleeping. Come on, let's do it. accused you of neglecting your duties, shirking your responsibilities, when in fact you performed your duties far above the requirements of this office. Well, I appreciate what you're saying. I guess that just goes to show us that you shouldn't criticize a fella until you know the whole story. You're absolutely right. I appreciate your understanding. Ah, uh, you're welcome, Tutwater. Tutwater? Well, I got rid of Elmer for you, GB. Yeah, I was wondering about that. What kind of an idea did you come up with? Had an ingenious idea, and Elmer couldn't resist it. And what was that? Fishing contest. Nicodemus, I wouldn't have thought of anything better myself. Why, all you got to do is mention fishing to Elmer, and he'll stop anything. <laughs> hey, who won the contest? Well, the fish I caught, he must have been this big. Ah, ah, ah. Now, come on. How big was your fish? Well, he was at least that big. Nicodemus, there's no way that a fish that size could live in that small a creek. Now, come on. How big was he? Well, I know he's this big. Nicodemus, show me exactly how big your fish was. Will he really put up a fight for his size? Well, I got him right here. There he is.
I'm Gospel Bill, and this is Dry Gulch, USA. And I want to invite you to a week of camp this summer that you'll never forget. When you come to Dry Gulch, USA, you can stay in a log cabin that looks just like an Old West storefront. But there's a lot more to Dry Gulch, USA than just eating and sleeping. Our camp has more than a mile and a quarter shoreline on beautiful Lake Hudson. And it's just a perfect place for a canoe ride. You can go fishing and swimming. But maybe you're the kind who would prefer to ride horses or ride in the county jail wagon. You might enjoy visiting Chief Nwanasin for an exciting campfire story or hunt animal targets on the Chief's trail. Then there's time for a shooting contest and hiking trails. Hey, there's plenty to do at Dry Gulch USA, but the most important reason for coming is so you can grow strong in the Lord. For more information on Camp Dry Gulch USA, call 918-234-5656. Coming up next, a tragedy is averted when the Andersons learn to live without their TV set on Father Knows Best. Then at 8.30 Eastern, the Baxter's patience is taxed to the limit. But in the end, it pays off on Hazel, here on the Family Channel. On the Gospel Bill Show. I'm afraid Miss Lynn has been exposed to smallpox. Well, I've done about all I can do. We've made her as comfortable as possible. You better pray. It's Adventures in Dry Gulch. Featuring the Sheriff Gospel Bill. His sidekick, Nicodemus. The general store owner, Miss Lana. 
good old Elmer Barnes, banker and mayor T.U. Tudwater, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. I'm going to beat you this time. What makes you think that? I've been a practicing. Oh, yeah? Well, who with? Myself. <laughs> do you ever win? No, but I come close, but... Is you, how do you do that? Sheriff? <laughs> Sheriff, mind if I have a word with you? Well, not at all, Doc. What's the problem? Trouble. I've just come from about five miles out of town. There's a wagon train out there, and it's serious. Well, what is it? Smallpox. About half of the people have it. If we don't put a quarantine on them, it's going to spread all over the county. Well, now, have you already had a word with these folks? Yes, I went out there, but a couple of them gave me a real hard time. They're bent on coming into town. They want some supplies, and they want to get them. Well, now, we can't let that happen. I don't mind them having supplies. We can cart those things out to them, but they don't need to be leaving that wagon train. Well, listen, I'll ride out there and let them know they got to listen to what you tell them. Nicodemus, I'll be back in just a little bit. Okay. Smallpox and dry gulch? So you're just a few miles outside of town? Yes, ma'am. Oh. I tell you what, I've got a few things I want you to look at. Do you suppose these beans right here, do you suppose if I give you two pounds, that'd be enough? That'd be fine, ma'am. Okay. That's all I need to know. Tell you what I'll do, I'll get it all together for you, and then you can come back tomorrow and pick it up. You can pay for it then. That'd be great, ma'am. All right. Come on, boy. Bye. The Gospel Bill Show continues after this. something you don't know. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of things you know that I don't know. I mean, I know something you don't know. Well, are you going to tell me, Nicodemus, or are you just going to play 20 questions? Okay, I'll tell you, but don't you tell nobody, because it could start a panic in this town. Well, what is it? There's a wagon train just outside of town. Well, big deal. But, but folks on this wagon train has got Smallpox. Really? Really? Well, I knew there was a wagon train outside of town. Well, how did you know? Well, because a man and his little boy from there came in, checked out some supplies in the store. They came in here? Yeah. <gasps> Miss Lenny, you might be infected. I didn't get anywhere near them. Well, just the, just the same, I think we ought to go get the doc and check you out. <laughs> All right. Then while I'm gone, don't you call on nobody. Well, Sheriff, I sure want to thank you for riding out there with me. If you hadn't been along, I don't think they would have listened to me. Well, Doc, I think those guys got the message. You know, you just got to make them to understand that when they're in the middle of a smallpox epidemic, they just can't pick up and move anywhere they want to go. Spread smallpox all over everywhere. But... I think they understand. I don't think they'll be moving around. You know, Sheriff, there is one thing that's bothering me, though. When I went out there the first time, I'm almost positive that I counted 15 men and 26 children. But this time, I only counted 14 men and 25 children. Are you saying that we didn't get a total quarantine? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe my figuring's wrong. Well, at least I hope so. Oh, good. You're both here. I gotta talk to you fellas. I'm afraid Miss Lennon has been exposed to smallpox. Well, how's that, Nicodemus? Well, she just told me that a man and a boy from the wagon train was in her store and she waited on them. I think we better go check this out, Doc. Oh, it'd be awful if Miss Lennon got smallpox. <laughs> Miss Lana, we'd like to have a word with you for a minute. Well, sure. Nicodemus tells me that this morning there were a couple of fellas who came in here, a man and a little boy. They came in to buy some supplies? That's right, they sure did. Now think back. Did they say anything about smallpox? Did they say anything about coming from a wagon train five miles outside of town? 
Well, they didn't say a word about smallpox, but they did say they came from a wagon train five miles outside of town. Doc, you and I both know there's not another wagon train in the county right now, but that one, it has to be the same bunch. Now, let me ask you a question. Was there any kind of physical contact between you and them? No, not at all. How about some kind of an exchange of monies? No, because they're coming back tomorrow, and they're going to pay me then when they pick up their supplies. Well, then I really don't think there's a whole lot to be concerned about here. I would suggest that you go ahead and wash down your counters with a good light soap and anything else you may have noticed them touching. That should pretty well take care of it. Thanks a lot, Doc. Sure. Well, I don't understand that. I mean, why would he want her to wash her counter with light soap? Miss Lana keeps this clean at general store as I ever saw. Nicodemus. The doc wants Miss Lana to wash off these counters to get rid of any germs. You see, the smallpox is spread through germs. Well, I thought sickness came from the devil, though. Well, sickness does come from the devil. He's the one who invented germs. He uses things like that to spread sickness and disease. See, God uses the things of this earth to bless people with, while the devil uses bad things to hurt people. It's me madder than a horn toad. Well, anybody that had been a, a disease like smallpox ought to be shot out of a cannon through a barbed wire fence. Good day, Sheriff. Hello, Mr. Tudwater. Yes, can we have a few words? Why, well, sure. Have a seat right here. Thank you. It has come to my attention that there's some possibility of a smallpox epidemic here in Dry Gulch. Well, now, Mr. Tutwater, there is a wagon train about five miles outside of town, and half the folks on it do have smallpox. Now, Sheriff, I wonder if you understand the seriousness of this matter. Do you realize if word gets out that people are just likely to pick up and move, and if they move, that means they're going to take deposits out of my bank, and if my bank weakens, Sheriff, Dry Gulch just won't be the same. That's what I always appreciated about you, Mr. Tugwater. You've got a real heart for the people. Well, now, if it'll make you feel any better, there have only been two people exposed to the smallpox. Well, that's good. Now, certainly the doctor's one of them. Who might the other one be? You're sitting just a few feet away from the other fella. What? Well, I had to ride out there and take some supplies to him. Oh, Sheriff, how could you do that? How could you do that? Hey, I wouldn't touch those bars if I were you. I just breathed on them just a few minutes ago. Sheriff, I've come to make a rather unusual request of you, if I may. Well, now, Doc, you know you could ask just about anything of me, and I'd help you out. What is it? Well, I'm getting ready to ride out to the wagon train to bring them some supplies, and quite frankly, I could use some help. So I was wondering if you might come along. You're the only one I could think of that's already been exposed. And, and Doc, so I... don't say another word. You know I'll help you out. Come on, we're right on out there. Oh, oh, Miss Lena, I'll be right back. I gotta get some help.
Well, now that you've seen those folks a couple of times, Doc, what do you think? Well, for the ones that we got to early enough, things look pretty good. But unfortunately, some of them don't look good at all. That's why I think we need to get word off to the governor about this. You know, you're probably right. If there's a smallpox epidemic in this territory, he certainly needs to know. Well, there's no quicker way to tell him than to get a telegram all through Miss Lana. Well, now that's funny. The store's locked up. Now, that's not like Miss Lana. I've known her for years, and she never locks up in the middle of the day. You know, Doc, I got this funny feeling that something's not right here. Why don't you run over to Miss Lana's house and check on her, and I'm gonna run over to the jail and see what's up with Nicodemus. All right, sir. Lana's bad sick. Come quick, Nick. Well, I've done about all I can do. We've made her as comfortable as possible. I'll be back in a little while. You better pray. Okay, thanks, Doc. We're gonna pray. Miss Lennon, you're gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna get some healing scriptures and we're gonna pray. What did the doctor say, Nicodemus? I don't think he thinks she's gonna make it, Gospel Bill. Well, now I'll tell you what, she is gonna make it. Well, the Word of God says that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Miss Lana, you're going to live and not die. I don't know if you can hear this or not, but we're going to lay our hands on you and pray, and Amen. God's healing power is going to go to work in your body. Right. Now, Father, we come to you in the name that heaven has never failed to honor, the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask you for healing for Miss Lana right now. We thank you for that healing power that can go into her body and drive out every Amen. sickness and disease. And we thank you that that power is mighty and it is strong. And we thank you that that power does now work in her. And we receive it by faith in Jesus' name, and we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. pray again. I'm just going to thank you. Thank you for healing Miss Lana. We prayed one time and we released our faith unto you and we believe that you're healing her body because you said in your word that Jesus took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses and you said that by his stripes we were healed. Well, I just want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for healing Miss Lana's body and making her well. In Jesus' name, amen. Sheriff, what is it, Doc? Well, I've done just about everything I can do. And I just don't think Miss Lana's gonna make it. Now, wait just a minute, Doc. Now, just sit down right here for a minute, would you? I want to talk with you. Now, listen. I know you've been working real hard lately, and you've done everything you know to do. But, Doc, you're a man. And men come to the end of their road. They can't do everything, but you know what? God can. He can do anything. And he wants Miss Lana to be well. You know how I know? Because I know about the stripes that Jesus took. Have you ever heard about those? Yes, yes, I've read that. Jesus was beaten on his back with a whip, Doc. And the Bible says himself, that's talking about Jesus, took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. That means Jesus took that sickness for Miss Lana. Doc, she is going to make it. She's going to recover. I got great news, fellas. Miss Lana's fever broke. She's a-talking. She's a-getting well. My appetite's coming back now, Trudy Moon. I could sure use some of that soup. All right. Hey, look here, fellas. See? I told you she's a-feeling better. Oh, Miss Lana, you sure looking good. Well, I feel a lot better, and I want to thank you for praying for me. Well, we're just bound and determined not to let anything happen to you. You're just too important a person for us to let you slip out of here. 
the old doc did everything he could, but things got to looking pretty rough there for a while. Well, I'm doing a lot better. I can actually feel the power of God working in my body. You know what? That's what happens when you pray in faith. You see, God's power goes to work inside you just like medicine, and faith is what makes it work. Gospel Bill's Video Purchase Club makes Bible truths come alive for kids young and old. Here's what you'll receive when you join. Two complete half-hour programs on each tape with Wild West drama, puppet skits, music videos, and a very special teaching from Gospel Bill all focused around a single thing. Your kids will enjoy watching these tapes again and again. And if you act now, you'll receive our brand new release, Drama Music Videos 3, 3. You'll enjoy Ken Blunt's new songs, such as Who Will Reach the Children, By Faith, Don't Let the Devil, and many, many more. To join Gospel Bill's Video Purchase Club and receive your free videotape, call Steve Houle, area code 918-234-5656, extension 128. Act today and receive a discount on membership and the first month tape. Ah. Uh -huh. 
count you well. I'll tell you how I know. The Bible says in 3 John, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. God said that he wants you to be in health. That means that he wants you to be well. And I'll tell you how I know it another way. Jesus paid for your healing by taking stripes on his back. They hit his back over and over again. The Roman soldiers beat Jesus with a terrible, terrible whip. A whip that probably had 12 straps in it. Every time they hit Jesus' back, it made 12 ugly lashes, and Jesus was beaten bloody. It was a terrible sight. He did it because he wanted to pay for your healing. You see, everything that Jesus bought for us, he had to pay for with some suffering. He suffered on the cross so that we could be saved. He let him beat him on the back so his body could be made weak so that we could be healed. God wants you to be healed. There's no mistake about it. Don't ever wonder about that at all. If you're sick, it's not because God wants it. Well, why doesn't he stop it? It takes our faith in him to get that prayer answered and to bring healing to our bodies. So if you're sick, don't put it off anymore. You pray right now because Jesus wants you well. Coming up next, Bud learns that tradition has value and a real place in life on Father Knows Best. Then at 8.30 Eastern, George discovers that male macho is no match for womanly wild on Hazel, here on the Family Channel. the Gospel Bill Show. Well, what's a zanky and zanky? My pet worm. Uh, can, can I see him for a little bit? Oh, no. They don't take kindly to strangers. And I'm their only family. Oh, I'd be real careful. I'm going to just let me see them for two seconds. Well, what do you got, Frank? Okay, but just for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> It's Adventures in Dry Gulch, featuring the Sheriff Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, the general store owner, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, Banker and Mayor T.U. Tudwater, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. Howdy doody, Sheriff. Johnny Bob McElroy, what are you doing in Dry Gulch? Oh, I just came to make some friends. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I hope you're not here to play any pranks. Oh, no, I just got so lonely up in those hills, I just had to come down and meet some new people. Well, I think you'll find that the people of Dry Gulch are real friendly, as long as you don't play any of your tricks on them. Well, I don't aim to play any tricks. I'm going to be real good this time. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, you're going to have to excuse me, Johnny. i got some things to check uh, in. Ah, Sheriff, I think maybe we could play some checkers? Well, I'd really like to, Johnny, but old Cecil's cow got stolen, and i got to go check into it. I'll see you later. Okay, uh, no time, huh? I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, I thought I'd come down from the hills and see how everyone's doing. Oh, it's good to see you. So I thought maybe like you and I could chat for a little while. What do you think? Oh, uh, Johnny Bob, I'd love to sit down and chat, but I've got this large order for Mr. Stable for, and I've got to hurry. Oh, so you, you, you got to fill an order, huh? Oh, well. Don't have any time to talk? <laughs> You sure are busy today, aren't you? Boy. Peanuts? Oh, they didn't even order peanuts. Johnny Bob McElroy? Yeah? It's times like this that let me know you came back too soon. Well, at least we had 
nice little chat, didn't we, Miss Lana? Out! Out of my store! Out! Cat's a big daddy. I gotta feel the vibration when he comes up. So, so I better go alone. Well, man, maybe I could just come and keep you company and talk to you. You can't talk if you're going to catch fish. You gotta be real quiet. Oh, real quiet, huh? Uh, Elmer, what you got in your hand there? <laughs> well, this is Inky and Dinky, my pet worm. Uh, can I see him for a little bit? Oh, no. They don't take kindly to strangers, and I'm their only family. Oh, I'd be real careful, Elmer. Just let me see them for two seconds. What do you got, think? Okay, but just for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's time to it. Thank you, thank you. Don't leave me. Now, Miss Phillips, I want you to know that if you do decide to place your money here in the Dragos Bank and Trust, you can have the confidence and peace of mind of knowing that your money... Hi, Mr. Earning... Tidewater! Oh, hello, Johnny Bob. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. Uh, what I was saying is that you'd have the confidence of knowing that your money is earning the highest interest in uh, the carry... Oh, Mr. Tidewater! Johnny Bob, what is it? I thought maybe uh, you and I could talk a little bit together. Uh, Johnny Bob, obviously we cannot. I am talking with a customer. Now, excuse me. Now, I believe it would be in your best interest, Miss Phillips, to open an account here at my bank. Yes, Bob, that's right, because all new customers will get a free prize. Who wants your hand? You get free words! Ah! <laughs> Let's play hide and seek! Ah! Johnny Bob McElroy! Ah! Hey, Miss Lena, I got this serious problem. Well, what is it? Well, you see, this afternoon I was supposed to take Miss Trudelieu out to the country for a little picnic. Oh, it sounds like some romance going on. Yeah, I'm sure there will be. But here's my problem. It's in the area of food. Now, I got most of your basic food groups covered. For instance, for bread, we got chocolate muffins with cream cheese and peanut icing. And then for fruit, we're going to have a whole bunch of green olives. And then for your vegetable group, I got two or three cans of green beans, you know, to help keep your facial muscles toned up. And then for the meat group, we're going to stop by Colonel Sanders on the way out of town. Colonel Sanderson? Yeah, you know that uh, retired army colonel went into the chicken business? He got great chicken, but I never could figure out his secret recipe of all them herbs and spices. Well, what is your problem? Oh, I don't have any dessert. Uh, well, you are a lucky man. Well, how's that? Well, just this morning, I baked up two fresh cherry pies. With real cherries in them? <laughs> That's why they call it cherry pie. Ooh, uh, well, could I buy one of them? Well, sure. Oh, wow. Mm, I'll, I'll pay for it later. Uh, but with uh, everything you described and, and with the pie, isn't that a lot of food? Well, it's no more than I usually eat. Ooh, I sure hope Miss Trudy Lou brings something for herself. Gotta be going. <laughs> Hey, Anika! Uh, Johnny Bob, uh, I'm kind of in a big hurry. See, I got a heavy date with a real cutie. So you don't want to talk to me, huh? Yeah, we're going to spend all afternoon just talking. I guess you don't want to spend any time with me, then. There's nothing I'd rather do than spend time with my sweetie. No, yeah, spending time. a good-looking pie you got there. Yeah, it's a good-looking pie. Well, listen, I gotta be going. Hey, uh, that pie sure looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks real good. <laughs> See? Hey, I bet that pie is really gonna taste good, isn't it? Mm, it's, it's gonna taste real good. I gotta go. Hey, you know what, Nick? I heard that you can tell how good a pie is gonna taste by the way it smells. Just by the way it smells? Yeah, go ahead. Just take a sniff. You'll find out. Just, just smell the pie. Yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, this tire sure does <laughs> Johnny Bob McElroy! Oh, Sheriff, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's old Linky and Dinky, my two best buddies. Now listen, Elmer, I don't think Johnny Bob intends to keep your worms. I think he's probably just teasing you. Teasing? He just doesn't understand. That's the only family I got. All right, well, I'll do my best to get you pet worms back, Elmer. Sheriff, listen. Worms, big deal. Do you realize that Johnny Bob is taking these worms over to my bank and is running off customers? How's he running off customers? You realize there was this young single woman who just inherited a tremendous amount of money and he ran her off by putting worms in her hands. Oh, I'll see that that doesn't happen again, Mr. Tedwater. He ruined us what he did. He just plain and simple ruined it. He ruined my date with Trudy Lou and he ruined my cherry pie. No, tell me. Let me guess. Johnny Bob McElroy. Who else? All right, listen, fellas. Johnny Bob doesn't mean anything by any of these pranks. I mean, he's doing these things just because he wants some attention. He's trying to make friends. Well, he sure got a funny way of doing it. Well, listen, I'm going to find him and sit him down and have a talk with him, and I think I can straighten him out. Well, what are you going to do, lynch him? No, I'm not going to lynch him. Mr. Tutwater, it's not that serious. Now, you guys just go on and get out of here. I'll find Johnny Bob and take care of things. Just calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Come on, now. Get out of here. i give Johnny Bob some of this pie up his nose. Oh, all right, guys. Now, go on down here and calm down. playing pranks on people while you were here in Dry Gulch. Well, I wasn't good at it. No one would talk to me, and playing pranks is the only way I can get anyone to notice me. Johnny Bob, that's not the way to make friends. You're making people mad at you. Don't you know how to make friends? Uh, I don't know how, Sheriff. Now listen, you certainly don't do it by getting everybody upset. The Bible says that if you want to make friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. You need to do things that well, and let people know you're their friend, not tear up all their property. Now listen, Johnny Bob, I'm going to lock you up in this jail for a few days to teach you a lesson. Or I'll let you out of here if you're willing to make things right with the people you've been pestering. I think I'll make things right. Well, you can start that out right here and now by cleaning up my jail. sickness, but I, I think they'll be okay. They do look a little thin. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, just to make it up to you, I've got two new friends for Inky and Dinky. Huh? Yeah, uh, Trixie and Pixie. Girlfriends for Inky and Dinky? Yeah, that's the least I could do. Well, thanks a lot, Johnny Bob. And hey, next time I go fishing, you can go with me. Oh, thanks, Elmer. Mm -hmm. 
It's time for a welcome home party. Paint monsters on me. <laughs> Bob McElroy makes me so mad. Well, he ruined my pie. He ruined my whole date. Now, how could a pie ruin your whole date? Didn't you wash it off? Well, sure I washed it off, Miss Lena. But I can't go out on a date with Miss Trudy Lou with me a smelling like a fruit pie. Well, why not? Don't you understand? Women like to go out with men that smell like real men. You know, the way I smell after I've been out on the trail a couple of months, punching cattle with trail dust all over me. Well, a man ought to smell like a real man. Ah, uh, excuse me. Uh, Nicodemus, I wanted to apologize for, for messing up your pie like I did, and I'm sorry. Johnny Bob, well, I don't know what to say. I forgive you. And Miss Lanner, I'm sorry for messing up your general store like I did. Would you forgive me, too? Well, thank you, Johnny Bob. I sure do. Well, I was just hoping we could all be friends. Johnny Bob McElroy, just the guy I was looking for. I wanted to thank you for the great job you did in cleaning the windows at the bank. Well, I just wanted to make it up to you, Mr. Tutwater. Well, Johnny Bob, you're okay in my book. I am? Yeah, you're a pretty good guy, Johnny Bob. Really? You sure are. And you're welcome in this store anytime. You really mean it, Miss Lana? Well, I sure do. All of my friends are.
now, from the people that bring you Adventures in Dry Gulch, comes an exciting youth program, Fire by Night. A monthly one-hour videotape that has outrageous comedy skits, interviews with today's top Christian musicians, along with their latest music videos, and lively teaching from your host, Blaine Bartell. You'll also find out what's hot in the Christian music scene, and enjoy Family First, a sitcom which deals with everyday situations that young people face growing up as Christians in the real world. Each show concentrates on a single subject, such as peer pressure, overcoming fear, conquering temptation, and don't say suicide. And with this special offer, not only will you receive a discount on membership, but also a free tank, the best of Muskogee Vice, those wacky country cops where the Bible is the strong arm of the law. To join, call Steve Houle at 918-234-5656, extension 128. Isn't it time our teens had a show with a strong ministry value as well as lots of fun? Hey, today we're going fishing, but we're not going after fish. Today we're going to learn how to catch some friends. You know, catching a friend is a whole lot like catching fish. You've got to use the right kind of bait. Now, if you wanted to catch a fish, you wouldn't take this old boot down to the fishing hole and put it onto your hook and throw it out into the water. Why, if you did that, you could never expect to catch a fish. But that's what people do when they try to catch friends. They use the wrong kind of bait. You see, if you want to catch a friend, you have to be friendly. And you know what some people do? They expect everyone else to come to them first. They're so shy, and they never say a word to anyone. They never invite anyone else over. They always want someone else to ask them. But you know what? If you want to be a friend to someone else, make yourself friendly. You do the asking. Don't be bashful and stuck up. Now, here's another way that people use bait, and the wrong kind of bait, I might add, to catch friendly fish, and that is they use garlic. It's an old rotten attitude. They're sour with everybody that they meet. They're afraid that no one's going to like them, so the way they compensate is by being ugly to everybody else. They're always saying smart things to everybody, cutting everybody else down. That's not a very good way to make friends. It's like fishing with garlic, and by the way, fish don't like garlic. All right, this is Worm, and he's the right kind of bait, and that's the kind of bait you've got to use if you want to catch a friend. You've got to use friendliness. The Bible says that if you want to make friends, show yourself friendly. So do things that a friend would do. Give someone a gift. Invite them over. You take the first step in making friends, and before long, you'll catch all the friends you can handle. Coming up next, a peaceful trip turns into an adventure for the Anderson clan on Father Knows Best. Then at 8.30 Eastern, a twisted version of the truth is no substitute for the real thing as George's partner finds out the hard way on Hazel, here on the Family Channel.